Your Michigan Wolverines are 7-0, 4-0 in conference, and are going to be matching up with the undefeated Michigan State Spartans in East Lansing this coming Saturday. The Michigan-Northwestern game, in my opinion, was scary at the beginning, but in the end, we did indeed pull out. We were up 10-7 to at the half, just fumbled the ball inside the Northwestern 5. They had some momentum. We got the ball after halftime, and immediately we did have a touchdown drive. After that, Northwestern drove down, tried to make it 17-10, to missed the field goal. We exchanged punts. Then we drove down for a touchdown. They punted. We got a field goal. We picked them off, turned that into a touchdown. And from there, we just exchanged, exchanged pardon me, punts, fumbles, had a missed field goal, and the game ended 33-7 to Michigan. This game was, I think, somewhat eye-opening for us as a fan base and for everyone involving Michigan. We won 33-7, to and don't get me wrong, we dominated that game, outgaining Northwestern 457 total yards to their 233. We had two turnovers, they had two turnovers. We had 18 more first downs than they did and we had nearly 20 more minutes of T.O.P. than they did. But we made some mistakes. This game could have very well been if Jake Moody's field goal wasn't missed, and let's just say the fumble didn't occur in the end zone before half. This game could have been 43-7, to honestly. Could have been a much bigger win. Northwestern is a team that is ever-improving. They always do this under Pat Fitzgerald. They start off a little slow most of the time and then finish out strong, as in the case with their 2018 season where they started off horrible, ended up reaching the Big Ten championship game. They're getting better and better. However, what I will say about this game is they definitely exposed some of our weaknesses. We held Ryan Halinski to under 50% completion, on his pass attempts. Only completed 14 passes out of 29 attempts. We held Northwestern to 133 yards passing, a bite we did allow 100 yards rushing and 4.3 yards per rush. However, once again, we did shut down an opponent's passing game, but there were some things that they exposed for sure, and there were other things that we looked very competent at doing. So let's get right into those. The takeaways. The positives that I see, and there are many more than this, and we will bring up those, of course, is Northwestern exposed our soft spots, and we still won. Still won by 26 points. We covered the spread. The spread was 23 and a half, maybe 23, correct me if I'm wrong, in the comments below. That was the spread for this game, and we still we covered it despite some of our mistakes, some of which could have really turned the tide of the game. Cade almost throwing a pick being one of them. We'll get that we'll get onto that later. But once again we show resiliency, barely beating them in the first half, crushing them in the second. I would much rather be a second half team. Another positive, and this goes along with the run game, despite the injured O-line was dominant, JJ had two amazing runs where he dodged and juked out defenders like it was his job. That got me excited, along with some of the throws he made and the one fourth and four where he was scrambling everywhere, and yes, there was an illegal block, but he still managed to complete a pass. It was amazing. The QB situation is very interesting. We'll get that into that later because I think that's almost more of a concern to a certain degree. But Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins tearing it up on the ground. Corum with 19 carries for 119 yards, 6.3 yards per carry and two touchdowns. He had a long run of 24 yards. 
That kid is elusive and can break away and make finesse moves. It is amazing to me. We are blessed that we have th- as good of a running back duo as we have with Blake Corm and Hassan Haskins. Sure, neither of the two, I don't think either of the two are the best backs in the country by far. They have their strengths and weaknesses. Blake Corum, you know, if he doesn't break the initial tackle, he doesn't always truck through people. He, he doesn't have the same power that Haskins does. But he's fast, elusive, and does have muscle and can take hits. He might not be good at, you know, powering or trucking through them, but he's strong, has endurance, and can break away. Hassan Haskins doesn't necessarily have the same elusiveness, and he does not have the big gameplay speed and explosiveness that Corum does, but man, he just keeps going and going and going, and his legs are wheels. They just don't stop until the whistle is blown. It is absolutely amazing. Like the one where he was almost stopped, the run, but then the O-line just pushed him for, what was it, another 10 yards? It was crazy. So having those two as a duo is perfect. The perfect rushing attack. Michigan ran for 5.4 yards a carry, had four total touchdowns on the ground. Donovan Edwards even got some playing time with five carries. He also had a reception for 11 yards, but unfortunately he did fumble that. Cornelius Johnson, Andrell Anthony, and A.J. Henning We also had some end-around attempts. That's why they each got one carry for an average of like just barely above five yards. Northwestern was pretty good at shutting those down, but we were able to just pound away at the ground game, get nearly 300 yards rushing. It was absolutely absolutely amazing, the ground game we had. The offense altogether was, you know, for the way that it, executed itself in the first half. I was impressed that in the second half they did step up their game and execution and scored 23 points compared to the 10 in the first half. Now on to the concerns. The concerns I have for this team are as follows. We have to work on the passing defense. The passing defense, just looking at how it is, yes, we did hold Ryan Holinsky to 114 yards passing, Northwestern to 133 yards passing, and we picked him off once. But, you know, some of those screen passes where they got far the better of us, and some of those moments where, there were moments where Holinsky had guys wide open, wide open. And he couldn't, he just didn't hit the right guy. What that tells me is that our coverage, and our coverage has been far better than last year. For the talent we have at those positions and somewhat the lack of depth, Clink Scale's doing an amazing job. Same with DC Mike McDonald. But from what I see, Helinski basically steps back, has next to immediate pressure, and has to make a decision. And there are moments where there are wide open Northwestern wide receivers that could have been covered, that were badly covered. In some instances, instances, Helinski targeted them but overthrew them, or he hit the wrong guy. Again, likely due to pressure and being hurried by the near elite or elite defensive line that we do indeed have. That was showcased on all but the 75-yard touchdown run. And that happens in games, so I'm not going to really target that, even though that was kind of frustrating in the moment. We rely on our defensive line to, like, you know, fluster the quarterback. And I don't know if we can do that against teams with better offensive lines, which for now on the Big Ten is basically only Ohio State. But still, we always have things to work on. I think this team would agree that there are always things to work on. And that's another positive, actually, looking back. This team is not arrogant. This team doesn't get ahead of itself. And this team bounces back. They are not full of pride. Rather, they are full of having a great work ethic. And they are full of humility. And I hate to say it, but I think Cade's time is next to up. 
And Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson even talked about this during the game, how Cade doesn't have the same upside J.J. McCarthy does. And yes, J.J. McCarthy missed two out of you know, his five pass attempts, completed the other three. But what I will say is, you know, Cade, he took some deep shots, and the ball placement just wasn't there. If he placed the ball right, those would have been likely caught. Maybe they would have been swatted away. Northwestern was playing solid pass defense, in my opinion. But there was another moment where Cade, they missed, Northwestern just missed the field goal. Immediately after that, Cade decides, I'm going to throw into double coverage where a Northwestern dude is basically in front of my Michigan wide receiver. I'm going to throw it to him, and it's going to work. And it it didn't. It almost got picked off. His decision-making in this game did not look the best. His execution certainly wasn't. And yeah, he was 20 of 27, but only for 129 yards. Only 4.8 average yards per throw. So I don't know what you know. You guys think of this. I know what I think of it. I think the stats are telling a little bit of a lie here. I think J.J. McCarthy with his runs, how he ran, and even how he passed, especially on that 4th and 4 that was unfortunately called back, I think if we want to beat Ohio State, we got to start him. We got to put him in. And luckily, with how the schedule seems to be falling, if we beat MSU, the games after that, before Ohio State, are not as hard as some of them looked. As you know, Penn State just lost to Illinois. They looked, they did not look like a top 25 team. The only reason they might remain so in my books and others' books is because they're proven before their two losses. And that Iowa loss was not nearly as bad as the loss today. But Michigan, you know... I love this team. I love that we're 7-0 and 4-0. And I do agree that with Cade, we could very well get 11 wins. I mean, I think Cade can do enough against Michigan State's defense, Penn State's defense, Maryland's defense, Indiana's defense. There, that's the four games before Ohio State. And you know, he might be able to do enough against Ohio State's defense. But against Ohio State's defense, enough isn't enough. Because against teams like Northwestern and other teams, we're often forced to punt the football or settle for the field goal. And with how explosive Ohio State's offense is, that might not end up well. We don't want to end up, you know, like 2019 where we're competing, but in the end, we either turn over the ball or are forced to kick a field goal as Ohio State marches up and down the field. And I think this defense is better than that. But Ohio State's offense is talented, and the defense can't, you know, we can't rely on our defense to win games forever. Special teams helped with the blocked punt. We held Northwestern to, you know, less than 250 total yards, and we made plenty of mistakes on offense. Our defense really helped us win. At some point, we have to, you know, kind of hand the keys, you have to have like joint custody is the better term, between the offense and the defense as to who controls the game. Because against Ohio State, the game plan we have right now, at least in, I don't think, we'll learn more as Ohio State goes on. I just don't think it'll work in a certain sense. And that's not to say this team isn't good. This team might be one of Harbaugh's better, if not his best team, depending on the end season result. Who knows? I think this team could very well go 11-0, and entering the game. In fact, with how Penn State played and with how I think of Michigan State and other teams, I think they will be. But you never know. That's really all I have to say here. This was a great game. And even though they didn't Michigan didn't live up to, you know, them bludgeoning Northwestern like 49 to 7, like I said I thought would happen, I actually liked this result because and listen here. We dominantly won. We gained confidence. We know that a a team can catch us by surprise and we can come back. The Nebraska game, this game, and the Wisconsin game all showed that. But, but, Northwestern exposed 
some weaknesses that will come you that will you know it'll be useful for us to fix those weaknesses against Michigan State like the passing situation Northwestern with their screens and all that they exposed our defense for over pursuing and you know what Michigan State did against Miami down in Florida when their defense was getting to thorn they let them over pursue and did a bunch of screens and Northwestern, that 75-yard touchdown run is really going to force the defensive line coach and the and the defense to work on, you know, stopping the run because Michigan State can also run. So it's good that Northwestern's offense, despite not putting up a bunch of points or yards on us, exposed some of our weaknesses to better prepare us against State. That's all I have to say. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment your thoughts below. What did you think about this game? Do you think Michigan's ranking right now is appropriate? Do you think they're a top 10 team? Or do you think they're a pretender? And last but not least, who do you think wins in East Lansing next week? I want to hear from Michigan fans, Spartan fans, all fans out there. Who do you think wins in the undefeated matchup next week? Tell me down below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you around.